Welcome to the Valve Studio. It's a little different segment today. We're just going to go over some stuff I found in my storage unit. I brought it out here. I got it on the bench. I'll go ahead and click in a, in a few moments. I'll go ahead and click to the overhead camera. We'll go ahead and take a closer view of what we have. I'm putting them out there to kind of get some user feedback on what I have here. Uh, some advice on how to move forward with some of these, these items. This particular device here, uh, right to my left, is something that's destined for a friend of mine uh, who used to be a student of mine about 30 years ago. He's now a, a, a communication professor at the University of North Florida. I'm going to shoot a little bit of video today, kind of show you what this is. If anyone knows what this is or has any information about it, that'd be great. Uh, I'm going to give it to him and he's going to put it, hopefully put it in his office at the, at col at the college there and uh, quiz his students on, on its use as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here's our first item. It's a Detectron model DS277. It is a Geiger counter. I know nothing about Geiger counters. And actually, I didn't know really why these are so prevalent. Um, I found, I've actually found a lot of these in garage sales or estate sales. If you open this up here, um, there's a battery compartment over here. And this thing uh, has a single tube in it. This is a 1U5. And these are the, this is the detector down here. It looks like there's been a little uh, uh, battery leak uh, action uh, kind of affecting the bottom of this. I think that that's going to be fine, though. And then down at the bottom, there's a couple of notes in this box. This one here says uh, uh, the battery we need, a, the first one we need is 67 volts. The second one is a 30 volt, uh, uh, 30 volt battery. And the last one are D batteries that are just at one and a half volts. So, I really know nothing about uh, Geiger counters. It's kind of uh, ironic since I grew up in Los Alamos. I mean, I know what they do. They sense radiation. It turns out that Western Colorado is uh, was one of the ma major uranium mine locations in the country. And, you know, I live on the, the uh, kind of the major city in western Colorado. And things like this were actually used over, you know, near this, this little town called Uravan. And uh, Uravan was, uh, in the 80s, was actually, the, the, the town of Uravan was demolished and declared a super fun site in 1986. There's a, so there's a lot, I'll show you a picture here of all the, uh, uranium mines in Western Colorado. There's just quite a few. All right, so our next item is another one. Okay, it's got their Civil Defense logo on the side. This one actually is a little newer unit. This one doesn't have a tube in it. This one is a lot smaller. Still has a lot of batteries in the bottom. There's a schematic down here. The schematic looks like a... Uh, uh, is that right? Oh, let me let me get this orange right for you. The schematic looks like it's a four tube design. There's a couple trans transformers in here, so uh, anyway, uh, pick this up. Likewise, probably a yard sale somewhere. This is pretty hard to get back together. Then the last one here, number three. So it might not even fit on a camera. It's really big. This one is a a nucleometer. It's a it's a detectron as well. It's model DR two ninety nine. This one's a beautiful condition. Uh, the probe down here, the Geiger tube tube itself, is down in this this pack. This uh, this little side uh, side pouch. I, I don't want to get this out of this leather case. I'm going to leave this in here. But I, I, I do think that there's about, there might be three tubes in this 
this particular design. Yeah, so the reason why that these are so prevalent in garage sales and estate sales is that there was, uh, there was a lot of uranium prospecting. People want to go find a uranium mine and make their riches at that and help uh, national defense at the same time. Which brings me to my last item. I bought this at that estate sale in Los Alamos at the Jim Taylor estate sale. This thing right here. I got no idea what this is. <laughs> what I suspect it is, is a multiplexing uh, telegraph machine. Where I believe if you look at some of these setups up here, uh, you set up various currents based on uh, the position of these uh, up here uh, on this. Uh, this is like a, a basically a potentiometer up here, and these are the wipers. There's four of them, and there's four of these over here as well. So I think that somehow you set up these in combination such that you can send four different simultaneous signals down the same wire at different currents, and somehow this is is both a basically a modulator and a demodulator but it does it at the current level uh, not at the frequency level <clears throat> let me kind of get this out it weighs a ton <clears throat> because underneath here i think it's nothing but relays and coils might be able to determine its age by looking at these resistors but i don't think so Isn't this thing a beaut? Now the meter there is a Western Electric volt and milliamp meter. Here's the four keys. Never seen anything like this. Have you? If you have, please uh, give me a call. Not give me a call. Send me some mail. Send me a message on YouTube. And let me know what you think about this thing. I am going to give it to uh, my uh, my friend, my professor friend at University of North Florida. He's a comms professor, and I think that this would go well as a desk item for his uh, university office. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, we're back to doing tube amplifier design in the next in the next segment. Thanks for watching. This is the Valve Studio.